Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to session stores. So this is something that you very likely will need, especially when you want to persist session data for the user, because sometimes your server may go down for unknown reasons and they might restart. And when that happens, all of your session data will be gone because by default, Express Session stores it in memory. So what you want to do is you want to store this in a database so that way it can be persisted whenever your server goes down. And if it goes back up, the session store will have that session data there and Express Session will look in that session store in the database to grab the session data and restore it for the user. So Earlier, I actually did show you how the in-memory session store looks like and how it stores data. I'll show you again. So inside my API slash users endpoint is where I have this being uh, logged. So what this does is it looks for the session ID. And uh, if there are any errors, I'll just throw an error. But then we pretty much just log the session data right over here. So right now, I'm not logged into the application at all. I'm not authenticated, so I don't have a cookie or anything. But if I make a request to API slash users, and if I show you the logs, you can see that right over here, uh, inside session store get, that's where I'm logging this right over here. You can see that the session data is undefined. Okay, that's fine. Let me go ahead and log in first because we haven't actually uh, modified the session data at all. We haven't actually logged in yet. So let me go ahead and log in. So let's do this API slash auth. I'm going to log in. Oh, whoops. Did I forget? Yep. Sorry about that. Uh, bad credentials. Uh, oh, wait. You know what it is? It's because I'm still comparing the old, the raw based, the raw text password in the database. Let me use uh, Johnny instead. And then the password is, I think it was hello123 as well. Okay. So I just successfully logged in. Let's verify. Let's go to the status endpoint. And you can see that I'm logged in. Obviously, you don't want to return the password, but that's something for a separate part of this tutorial. But now, watch this. When I go to slash API slash users, you can see that in the console, so we're inside session store get, so we're logging it right over here. And then you can see that this is the session data, and you see how the session data, I have the cookie, and then I have the passport, and then I have the user. Okay, so every single time we make a request to the server, um, Express Session will take care of looking for the session data in the in-memory store, and then it will know who the user is. Okay, and then right over here, we have the user ID uh, inside Passport. Okay, and then Passport will take care of calling the serialized user with the ID, and then it will search for the user in the database, and then that's how it will grab that user from the database and attach it to the request object. Okay, so if the server goes down, so let's say right now, if I restart the server, and if I try to visit, uh, let's say if I visit the previous endpoint, let's do auth slash status, you see how it says unauthorized, so we're not even logged in anymore. Okay, all of our session data is gone. If I were to go back to slash API slash users, you can see that now the session store does not have our data, it says undefined. So obviously that's a problem. So what we can do is we can use a session store to save the, the session data. And it's actually not that difficult to use because all we need to do is just have a database connection, which we already do already. So in earlier parts of the tutorial, I showed you how to connect to a MongoDB database using Mongoose. So that's this right over here. And then what we can do is we can reuse that Mongo connection to connect our session store to that database. So we're going to use this package called connect Mongo. And pretty much this is just a MongoDB session store for Express. Now, let's say, for example, if you're using some other database, there are a bunch of different session stores right over here. So this is the Express session documentation. If you just scroll all the way down and you scroll down to compatible session stores you can see that let's see there is one for couchbase db there's one for uh, memcached mongo mongo yep connect mongo right over here there's one for sql oh, this is the microsoft sql server neo4j redis firebase there are a bunch okay so you just have to look for this look in this list and find the one that you want to use uh, we're just going to use connect mongo for now so let's just first install connect mongo so inside my terminal I'll type npm i connect mongo. 
And of course, you must make sure you have already a database connection. So in this case, since we're using Mongoose, I can actually just reuse this database connection. So now that we've installed Connect Mongo, we can import that into our index file. So I'll import Mongo store from Connect Mongo, just like that. And then we need to go down into our session middleware and we need to set this store property. So where you're pretty much calling this session function. And then you want to reference Mongo store dot create. And since we are using Mongoose, we can actually reuse that connection. So there's this property called client in the connect Mongo options like this. And then you can reference Mongoose, which, which we have imported up top over here. And then you can reference connection and then you can call this gets client method just like that. Okay, and this says returns the MongoDB driver among client instance that this connection uses to talk to MongoDB. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up the server again and let's just make sure everything is good. Okay, so we're connected to the database and let's actually try to authenticate now because that's what actually modifies the session. So let's go ahead and make an API request to API slash auth, let's send the username, Johnny, and then password, hello123. So we are logged in successfully, no errors in the console. Okay, that's good. Now let's go into our database and let's see what happens, okay? If, so I'm gonna refresh, and you notice how now there is this sessions collection, okay? Notice how now there's a sessions collection. Let me expand this real quick. And you can kind of see how we have, uh, let me see if I can kind of do this so you can see it better. Okay, so you see how we have this sessions collection right over here. So now we're actually storing the session data in MongoDB in our database. So then what happens is now I'm logged in. Okay, I just logged in. I'm going to make a get request to the auth slash status endpoint to verify that I am logged in, which I am. Okay, so we're good. Now watch this. The problem that I mentioned earlier was that if I were to close the server, so I'm gonna exit the server, and if I restart it, it would log us out because all of the session data was saved in memory. But because now that we actually have a session store that is a database, it will use the database to restore the session data. So watch this, okay? So I have my session data stored in the database, and notice how if I make a get request to the auth slash status endpoint, notice how I am still logged in. Okay, if I remove this store completely, it's going to use the memory store by default. Okay, and let's go ahead and restart the server. Click send. Notice how now I am unauthorized because my session data is not found in memory because it's using the in memory store by default. So I really hope this makes sense and I hope this showcases how important a session store is because now instead of having your session data stored on stored in memory, it stores it in a database, which is great for persistence. Okay, so you can restart your server how many times as you want. The session data will always be restored. So notice how now if I just call this endpoint again, after just uncommenting out this part, the store options, now we see our data. So what happens underneath the hood is by configuring that session store, it will basically look inside the sessions document or inside the sessions collection, and it'll search for uh, this session ID right over here. So if you look right over here, WRGK, if I kind of show you the cookies right over here, let me see if I can find it. You see how this is my session ID right over here, and I can even log it to I think I may be logging it already. Nope. Let me log it right over. Let's see. Let me go into, let me go back to the status endpoint and let me just log request that session ID. Okay, and if I make a request again, and you see that we have that that's our session ID right there. And notice how that session ID is the same ID that's in 
the our document right over here. So what happens underneath the hood is when we send the request to the server, remember we're sending the cookie back to the server, right? Our cookie is right over here. So that gets parsed on the server. And then what happens is instead of looking for the session data in the memory store, it'll look in our MongoDB database, which is persistent. And that's how it will take care of looking for the session data. So sorry about clicking all this stuff. Let me click over here and show you the, the MongoDB compass client. So it'll look for the ID, okay? And then it looks for the session property and it will basically take this whole stringified object, parse into JSON, and then attach this object to that request.session object, which is what you see right over here. Okay, and notice how we have the password data right over here. That's right over here. And notice how this is right over here as well, the user ID. So everything is in the database now, which is great. So now since we're on the topic of session stores, I want to revisit these two properties, save uninitialized and resave for uh, the session configuration, because I mentioned this and I told you all not to worry about it so much until we got to session stores. So right now we have this set to false. Okay, so what this means is uh, only when you modify that session data object, then it will actually save this to the session store. Okay, so in our case right now, when we authenticate using Passport, Passport will modify the session data object for us, which means that it will also save it to the session store, which is actually what you see happening right over here. Okay, so when you set save uninitialized true, it's going to save every single session object to your session store, even if you didn't modify the session at all. So I'll show you, I'll show you an example, okay? So right now what I'll do, let me just delete this session from the database. So that means I'm no longer authenticated. You can see right now, if I try to make a get request, it's gonna say I'm unauthorized, okay? Because I don't have that session data stored on the server side now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set save uninitialized to true. And I'll just visit any random endpoint. So I can visit, uh, let's see, I'll visit slash API slash auth slash status. And let me also clear my cookies as well before I do this. Just so that we are at a clean state. So I'm going to make a request to API slash auth slash status. Okay. And notice how it gives us back a cookie. And notice how now in the session store, you see how it's saving this session data to the database, to the session store. Even though we never modified the session data at all. And you can tell because... Uh, let me show you the logs. Okay, you can see that we have the session data and we have this cookie. So it's going to send us that cookie back, but we don't have anything related to the user at all. So if I try to revisit this endpoint again, if I refresh, I'm still going to use this. But notice how if I clear the cookies now, if I click, if I send a request again, it's going to create another session uh, data in the database. And then I can go ahead and just clear the cookie again. And it's going to create one again. So even though I'm not doing anything but just trying to visit an endpoint, it creates a session record for us. Okay, and this really depends on how you want to implement your application. Sometimes this might be useful, but you can start to see that this is not necessarily a good thing because um, it's, going to, it's just going to save a bunch of unmodified session data to your database, and that could use up a lot of storage. So it's better to only save the session data when it's been modified. So in cases where the user logs in, Passport will actually modify that session data, and then it will save the session data to the database. So let's take a look at the resave option now. So currently it's set to false. Uh, so I'm going to set it to true. And currently I have dropped all of my sessions in the database. But what I'll do is I'll make a request, a get request to this status endpoint. Okay, that's fine. We do get back a cookie though, which is which is fine as well. If I refresh, I can see that my session data is over here. So what resave really does is it pretty much just forces this cookie to be resaved every single time. So you notice how right now, let's pay attention to this date right over here, this date string. Okay, notice how every time I make a request, it's gonna go ahead and update this time 
right over here. Okay. So if I keep refreshing, it's basically just going to keep updating that expiration date. Okay. So it resaves it every single time. If I set it back to false, and let's go ahead and let me just refresh real quick. So pay attention to this time. So 14, 43, 39. So you'll notice how if I click send again, and I, if I refresh, notice how the date does not actually get modified because we're not forcing that cookie to be updated, to be resaved every single time, even though there's no changes happening at all. Now, if I actually try to log in, so watch this, I'm going to go ahead and try to log in now. So I am logged in and I think I am using the same cookie as well. Uh, let's see, maybe not. Let me refresh. Oh, okay, so here's what happened. Okay, so it actually replaced that session ID that we previously had with this one. So notice how when I refreshed, we now have this session ID. And you'll notice that now everything got updated and it modified the session. So typically, when you do modify the session, it will actually update the cookie as well, which is what you see over here. You can see that I don't have the same cookie anymore as before. Okay. Um, let me see. Yep, that's fine. So, yeah, hopefully the resave part makes sense. Now, typically, ideally, you would want this set to false, and you would also want save uninitialized set to false as well. But it also could depend on when it's useful. Like, for example, if you have it set to true, that could mean that someone just visited your website, they're performing some kind of uh, operations, maybe they're adding products to a cart, but then once they log in, you want to persist that session data as well. So that way it's not gone. So once they log in, they have their cart all set up already, even though they did that when they were a guest on the application. So hopefully that makes sense.